terrorists. Hold on. Here's Tara's Daily Rant. Good morning. Joining us now is Congress member Ralph Norman. Uh, if you could go ahead and bring him up, Tim, that'd be great. Good morning, Representative Norman. Good morning, Tara. Glad to be with you. Yeah, glad to be with you, too. First, um, this is very, very much overdue. Um, I want to personally thank you for um, standing in the breach at no small political consequence to yourself and holding up the election of Kevin McCarthy until we could get some basic promises for fiscal sanity, um, basic promises that we're not going to bankrupt the country, that he is going to fight. And he is fighting right now on television in a way I've never seen him fight before because of you and a small handful of others. Um, and, and I know that was not the easy thing to do and the political repercussions for you will last for years, but you stood with us. You had our backs. Um, and I want to thank you personally. Well, I appreciate it, Tara. You know, the, the, the good news, uh, yes, we did stand up. Yes, we, you know, we took the arrows uh, for a good many weeks. But I'm seeing this all over the country. You know, people now are, are realizing if we lose America or if we bankrupt America, where do you go? Name me a country that you go to. And, and you know, what we did was common sense. And you're right. Kevin uh, is fighting. He's doing a good job. You give credit where credit's due. And to be honest, if it if he were not, uh, there's a group of us that will will really voice our opinions and let him know. And so... I'm optimistic. We got a long way to go, and um, th- there's no more important thing that we're dealing with now is the, in this debt ceiling. You know, for the first time, uh, we are cutting government. Now, is it enough? No. Could we? I would like to have seen four times the cuts, but it is cuts versus an administration that is saying no cuts. And you know, Tara, if a 13-year-old runs a lemonade stand, you can find a dollar to cut. <laughs> this administration, after spending you know, tr- 6 to $7 trillion over the last two years, it can find no cuts. That's the unbelievable thing that we're facing up here. But the good news is we're willing to fight, um, and there won't be any compromise on what we put up there. Uh, we're just, uh, and then the, the Democrats have got to make a decision. Do they want to shut the government down? Or they're going to accept the budget uh, and accept the plan that we we have, which is is common sense, and we'll see what happens. What about all this scaremongering that Joe Biden is doing about? Oh, we're going to default on our debt. It's terrible. Tell me about that. Yeah, I mean, you know, I turned on uh, you know anywhere you go, any of the liberal uh, outlets, TV outlets, media outlets. Uh, you know, the false, the, the sky's falling, the Social Security, Medicare, the military vets are going to be cut. It's just not true. I mean, are we cutting the 87,000 IRS agents? Absolutely. Uh, are we going back to the 22 budget uh, and, and for the for the 24 budget that the Senate hamstrung us with uh, until September this year? Yes. Uh, but all of that, you know, including the clawing back the money that's just sitting in escrow, you know, that's not too much to ask. And thank God the consequences for the Democrats. Now, they think they're going to um, bluff and run this out to the very end. And the preview of coming attractions, I think they will wait until June 1, as Janet Yellen says, that we run out of money. Well, by God, if they run out of money, shut the government down down because um, they're going to have to realize uh, some sanity in what they're doing. And they just have not been used to being told no, but we're doing it. And, um, you know, hopefully no Republicans will side with the Democrats if they do that. If if the Republicans do not hold tight on this, well, not only will they lose the confidence of the American people, that's just be another nail in the coffin for the financial security of this country. And so we, at nine o'clock, we'll go in to get a, a report, our caucus, the Republican caucus, to see um, what came of the talks, which really are nothing. Terry, you know, what I've told anyone that asked me, he needs to put it in writing and let us know what he wants to do. And we'll just, you know, if, if it's anything that varies very much from what we presented, you know, we're going to say no. It's, it's up to you. And so I hope we've got the votes to do that. 
and I think we do. Talking to Representative Ralph Norman, can can you just explain this to me? So I just want to understand a cultural question. You're up there. They're going to bankrupt this country. We just had another interest rate hike. The cost of a new car has increased 30% in the last two years. A majority of Americans um, can now not afford a loan on a new car, all because of their spending. Do they just not care? Or are they, I mean, you almost got to wonder, are they dumb? Do they not understand their spending is bankrupting the country and impoverishing Americans? I mean, what is the mentality that we are we are going to have real power? We could literally default. I mean, what are what is their mentality? They are, are they homicidal? I mean, to to this country, to the economy, they're selfish or just deluded? Well, from from my vantage point, what I see since I've been up here, the left has co-opted freedom. I mean, they have put candidates, and they've done it by putting up these these basically lemmings who will do the bidding for them. Crony capitalism is alive and well. And what I mean by that is uh, they just live on government. Government is their god. And, you know, government doesn't create jobs. Businesses do. People want government out of their lives. But uh, get this. We were, we were in rules committee until 1 o'clock this morning debating a uh, a – Pop, put, trying to put a limit on who's coming in this country. Uh, and because Title 42 with the immigration crisis ends Thursday. And it was like talking to a wall. And Chip Roy finally said, you know, y'all have no interest in uh, curbing who comes in this country from terrorists to uh, God knows who. But to answer your question, they have co-opted the political system. And they've done it through a number of ways. Through uh, they did it through COVID, was the excuse. But you know, and, and one example in North Carolina, you you have ten days to vote. Now tell me how that makes sense. If you and I have a doctor's appointment, can you just show up ten days after the appointed time? No. Try doing that on an airplane. They leave you. So you've got can you've got people in Congress who care nothing about the country, just about you know, themselves and enriching themselves. Joe Biden has completely sold this country out to China. That's as pure as uh, I mean. I can't say it any any clear. He is a first class crook, and he has sold the country out. Well, that gets and, us to. I don't want to jump into this too. This press conference that's coming up today. Do you have um, any hints for us on what we're likely to hear from James Comer today? Oh yeah, they've got documents. The SARS. The suspicious activity reports that Hunter got from banks, which, Tara, that's, I was on the bank board. When you get one uh, suspicious activity report, which just details money that could be illegally illegal coming into this country, uh, one is serious. The, the guy had 152 that we know of. He took money from countries uh, like Ukraine, where he sat on the board and made well over 100000 every 30 days. It's, it's, wow. it's just crooked. And the guy has no expertise. Um, but, yeah, I mean, he'll, he'll come up with all the, the findings, that, and he's done a good job on it. But I tell you, people want consequences. You know, Hillary Clinton got by with it. Did she go to jail? No. And they're on both sides of the fence. you got Republicans who... Uh, you know, who make mistakes, and you got Democrats who make, you know, make mistakes. I've never seen a family, though, since I've been in office that has violated the trust of the American people like this administration. And they keep saying, and, and the media is with them. The media covers up for them. And, you know, they keep saying that they're innocent. Well, the facts don't show that. And James Conwell will put that out today, and uh, we'll see what happens. I want consequences for him, though. Um, they're thinking about bringing 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 him up on, you know, the fact he was able to get a uh, a gun when he shouldn't have, and then on tax some tax issues. But they're much bigger violations that Hunter and his family have done to this country that uh, need to be borne out and need to be prosecuted. Talking to Representative Ralph Norman, um, real quick, we're finding out to degree. Um, to which, you know, we're finding out why there's not a lot of whistleblowers. The shocking story from Bud Cummins out of the Department of Justice that, um, you know, he's a federal prosecutor. So a highly credible guy took evidence of the Biden's crimes, including, he says, 
that the Biden administration manufactured evidence against Paul Manafort, Trump's campaign manager, so they could put him in prison. He took the evidence to his superiors um, in the Southern District of New York, the Department of Justice, and instead of investigating Biden, they investigated him. What, what what do we do about this level of weaponization? It looks like the FBI, the DOJ, the CIA are weaponized to protect the Democrats from their crimes. What can we do? Well, we just have to fight. I mean, and we're, we're facing an internal battle in this country, in America, that we've just got to deal with. I mean, look at the over 60 cities that were torn to shreds. Who pays for that? Uh, back you know, years ago, you would go to jail for torching a building or breaking glass or turning over a police car. They have weaponized every department in this government. And it's happened over a period of years. And we just have to deal with it. You know, everybody's got to take ownership in their particular area. Uh, You know, my area, uh, I meet with the chief of police. Uh, I discuss what we can do to stop the vandalism that's occurring. Uh, Same way I'm sure that people now are doing in Spartanburg, Greenville, uh, because that's what we can do. We can make sure it doesn't happen to those areas that uh, people are coming into. I've never seen the number of New York license plates, the number of uh, Ohio, uh, Oregon, California. They're coming to South Carolina, and we just got to make sure that uh, they, we, we put judges who are conservative uh, in office and put politicians who office in office who aren't there to benefit themselves and it just takes work and that's what we're going to have to do and we're going to have to not be scared of the consequences because it's violence everywhere Um, and they're doing it purposely and they're doing it to gain to make people not exercise their first amendment right of expressing their opinions and we just can't do that we got to stop it Absolutely. Ralph Norman, we have just a few seconds left. Um, Breitbart is putting the size of the invasion that will occur on Thursday at 700,000 to a million. Representative Andy Biggs um, from Arizona used the same set of numbers. We now have the Guatemalan president calling the White House to try to warn them um, just from Venezuela. 80,000 Venezuelans are on their way. That's just Venezuela. And he can't even get them to return his phone calls. Can you talk about just just the sheer size and scope of the invasion that's going to occur um, on Thursday when Title 42 exp- you know, expires? And, and I mean, do we even have a border? We do not have a border. Nothing is being enforced. Title 42, for your listeners, is the remaining Mexico policy. Uh, heretofore, under President Trump, you could send anybody back and make, make them stay in Mexico. But he was building a wall so that he had designated points of entry. That's all stop right now. <clears throat> to put it in perspective, Tara, Clemson University holds 85,000 fans on a typical football Saturday. You're having five stadiums of illegals of 85,000. I would suggest that are coming every 10 days, uh, every 15 days. The problem, we don't know. And it, I mean, look at what it's doing to the classrooms, to the emergency rooms that the American taxpayers are having to put the bill for. And I've been to the border. I saw what Americans uh, who who were aiding and abetting uh, the illegals. I mean, they you think they had to get a COVID shot before they got on the plane? They didn't even have to show a driver's license. Wow. That's what we're dealing with. That's the wow. that's what we're dealing with. And then, but five football stadiums every 10 days. And we're going to have close to 15 million if this insanity continues. South Carolina is roughly 5.2 million people. So three times the size of South Carolina invading every part of the country. And I'll end with this. The gang member that we caught on the border, guess where he was coming? Charleston, South Carolina, because that's where the money was. And the gangs that are going to infiltrate every state in the union is, again, something we just got to fight. And I feel for our police officers because they're the ones having to deal with this. Yeah, as they're being defunded and harangued in left-wing areas. Representative Ralph Norman, uh, thank you so much for joining us today on on, uh, 98.9 WORD. Tara is swatted. Hear the Tara Show weekday mornings on News Talk 98.9 WORD, the voice of the Carolinas.